Because of AI, it's now possible to develop therapeutics much faster. Being able to see something through the darkness, being able to watch biology in action is just awe-inspiring. I work on large molecule therapeutics, which basically is biologics, think like antibodies, peptides, this kind of thing. A lot of what we're really interested in in the large molecule space is understanding as soon as that hits a living organism, where is it going to distribute in the body? Is it going to actually function when it gets there? It's also not just the biology, but also the chemistry. Are things going to be stable? What's happening? Is the body processing it differently than what you would expect? Because there's so many things that have to come together in order for you to have a functional medication. The bread and butter for this type of work is usually utilizing radionuclides. So we're radio labeling biologics and introducing them into an animal and seeing where they go. But that's often limited to understanding at the whole organ. But I don't know what's happening at like sub cells that are within that tissue or anything like that. So that really kind of pushed our group into utilizing microscopy. Now we were dealing with hundreds and hundreds of microscopy slides. <laughs> and so I ended up bringing in someone into my group that's from a very different scientific background. And she's more of like an engineer and thinks about stuff on the scale of like automation. And so she kind of helped me find equipment that could help me process this amount of samples in bulk. And then as soon as we accomplished that, then there was another problem <laughs> where we had way too many images to deal with. It's not just the number of images, it's also taking a, a picture of some biological system and understanding that whatever it is we're trying to ask of it is really actually pulled out of the image. And so that's where AI started to become a really larger part of our group's work because not only did we need to deal with the bulk of images, but we needed to ask much more complex questions than what would typically be handled by, you know, just looking at an image. To be honest, a lot of stuff that you might want to accomplish with image analysis or automation or even AI always seemed a little intimidating. And one of the things that I think has been the most surprising over the last five years is how accessible it is. Even if you don't know how to code, the concept of what you want to ask from a biological perspective, you can find software out there that will help kind of break your image into pieces. And you can still, even without having that ability to code, utilize AI in order to put things in the in the way that you want to break it down. That brings it to scientists who wouldn't have been trying to apply it in the first place. My PI from grad school, one time he sat us down and he was like, look, if you're going to be spending time on reagents, you're spending time doing an experiment, you have to think about what the cost is. It's not just the finances. At the end of the day, all of the money that's coming in to support our research is coming from people who have lost someone that they love, or it's people's tax money that's coming in to try to support programs that everyone is aware that we actually need. So any time that we spend or any reagents that we buy, it's not just the money we're spending, we're also spending that kind of hope and desire from people. And you have to take it seriously so that you're not wasting time. If I'm trying to understand how to you know, develop biologics for treatment in oncology, that time is always on my mind. And so the ability to scale up my analysis or ask questions I wouldn't have been able to ask on my own just by analyzing by hand or by eye, that's where AI, I think, really kind of helps me bridge this and helps keep the focus on the patients. Because it's not just the ability to use a technology. It, in the end result, it's the ability to ask really complicated questions, to do it at scale and to do it quickly, all of this translates into a faster turnaround time for our therapeutics or focused decisions so we don't waste time developing something that's not gonna work. Yeah.